How and when should you start hormone replacement therapy for menopause? Menopause is responsible for a wealth of painful and difficult symptoms from brain fog all the way through to mental health problems, sweating, relationship disturbances, and many other problems. It is a problem well worth solving. And if you're a clinician in this episode, we're gonna talk about how and when to recommend HRT to your patients. And if you're a patient, you should learn a little bit more about when to ask your clinician for help on this important subject. My name is Dr. Tim Pierce, and I'm on a mission to build the best science-based protocols for human health and longevity. If you're a clinician who wants to build longevity and wellness into your practice, then make sure you follow me as we document our entire journey from a medical aesthetics clinic all the way through to longevity and teach all of our colleagues around the world at the same time. In this episode, we're gonna talk about how to initiate patients and help them with the three big problems that our patients face brain fog, mood swings, and sleep disturbances. It's a central nervous system problem that plays out through the lack of hormones, and this is why it can be such a powerful area to treat. And of course, as well as solving immediate problems, what we really get is a long-term benefit to health. You can help prevent serious illness later on in life through optimizing hormones at the right age. Let me start by sharing a real-life case study of a patient I saw a few years ago. A patient who was otherwise peaceful, loving mother who suddenly became enraged by really simple things that her family would do. And she attended, really concerned about why her fuse had got so short. She would lash out at her husband and her children for relatively small things and started to wonder if she was depressed. She had been treated by previous GPs for depression, yet she didn't actually feel many of those symptoms that you would usually correlate with depression. It had been put down to a case of atypical depression due to stress at work. But in actual fact, when we started looking more closely at it, it was established that her hormone levels were relatively low. Her periods had become shorter. She was also experiencing the typical symptoms of brain fog and sleep disturbance, all pointing towards perimenopause as a potential diagnosis. Perimenopause can masquerade as different types of illnesses, particularly psychiatric. So some patients will present with anger issues, while others will present with classical depression. And it's important for clinicians to keep perimenopause as a differential so that you can help patients appropriately. Just remember about what the impact of this could be for patients like the one we've talked about. In this patient's case, she was suffering severe social changes because of her perimenopause symptoms. Disruption in your important social relationships is a really severe risk to health. As we know in terms of longevity, relationships are a huge part of what helps people survive long-term. And there are millions of women who are suffering unnecessarily because they have not had their hormones optimized. They think the problem is them or their family, where in actual fact, it's a shortage of hormones. In the case of my patient, she was risking a divorce because she could not tolerate the normal things her husband was doing. And I thought this is a really good example of how hormone depletion can in fact cause much further, more widespread injury to a patient's overall health and well-being, and why there's such an opportunity to keep this on your mind as a clinician to help your patients. So why did I think about HRT as a potential solution? It's important to know that your brain actually contains estrogen receptors, and it's been proven in animal studies and in some human studies that there's a direct effect of estrogen on the brain and executive function. So literally how well your brain works is affected by the levels of estrogen in a female. So as estrogen levels gradually drop during the perimenopause, many of these signs and symptoms can creep up on people who then typically describe them in non-medical terms, such as, I have a short fuse, I'm irritable, I can't sleep, or it's my husband who's getting more annoying over time. It's hard to know what's actually going on without the help of a clinician. So using this understanding of how hormones affect the brain it should pop into anyone's mind when a patient is experiencing unexplained changes in behavior and symptoms that it could be hormone related. And this is why we ended up testing our patient, her hormone levels and diagnosing perimenopause for the cause of her symptoms. So what do you need to know about your patient before you start? The first is get a thorough history of what they've been going through and look at aspects of their life in terms of both the physical, the psychological and the social to try and figure out where the changes are. This will both help you and them make sense of why you're going to recommend a different treatment plan to what they may be expecting. Most of the symptoms of menopause are to do with the effect on the brain. It's useful to think about this. It shows you how powerful these hormone changes are on the brain itself because slowing down in the number of eggs being reproduced is not noticed by patients. Similarly, you may not notice changes in skin as quickly or as easily as the changes that actually cause your brain to function differently. So we're establishing what are those changes, where are they having the impact, 
and therefore why it's more important to solve them and why the patient should be motivated and optimistic about getting a result when you've got that diagnosis. So what tests do you do when your patient presents with possible perimenopause as a diagnosis? Well, most general practitioners would recommend more than simply testing the hormones. Because they are so broad in their nature, many other causes are also possible. Although perimenopause will be by far the most common, I think, for the collection of symptoms, we also want to rule out rarer things at the same time. So a full blood panel will of course include your hormone profile, which you should do on your first day of your period. But in this panel, I would of course also include other blood markers that you do to assess any middle-aged person. So blood sugars, thyroid hormone, liver function test, urea and electrolytes, and then of course the sex hormones, which will help us most often get the diagnosis correct. Estrogen, progesterone, testosterone will all help you get the diagnosis correct for your patient and measure those relative levels. Remember, it's not full menopause, so you will not see zero in any of these, but they will be out of the normal ranges in many of your patients. They also don't actually have to be out of the normal range for you to suggest perimenopause as a potential cause. If you detect low levels of these hormones, it's very helpful to give certainty that you actually have the correct diagnosis. It's important to remember that the diagnosis is largely clinical in many people. You will not always get low levels of hormones on every blood test. Sometimes you will find them normal in one month and low the next month. And this is why the overall clinical picture is often more useful for clinicians to get the diagnosis correct and then to see the change in behavior and experience in your patients after hormones are replaced. So in summary, diagnosis of the perimenopause is primarily clinical, backed up with blood tests. We wanna be aware of those symptoms, but also how they present in unique patients. For example, mood swings, classically a symptom of perimenopause, may present as hating your husband for the first time. Now this, does, this needs to be investigated by a good clinician rather than dismissed as a one-off. Think about the age of your patient, classically over 45, and the broader symptoms that you can find that help you diagnose uh, the perimenopause. Ask about hot flashes, night sweats, mood swings, sleep disturbances, vaginal dryness, and decreased libido, all may be flagged when you ask the right questions. It's important if you're a male or a female who's never been through the perimenopause to keep this as a possible differential for all of your female patients, to naturally explore along these different symptoms and you'll pick up far more cases than your colleagues who go to the first symptom and diagnose around just one particular aspect, such as sleep disturbances. So how can optimizing hormones lead to longevity? This is really important to understand that these hormones are packed in with many of the body's functions. So it's really much more holistic than simply saying that you will improve bone health, which is one of the core areas that will help with longevity. Remember, estrogen is important for bone metabolism and in terms of maintaining bony strength, it's one of the most proven areas where HRT will prevent fractures in the elderly when started early enough. There's also an interesting connection with Alzheimer's and brain health. So if you can optimize hormones at the right age, you will prevent or delay the onset of Alzheimer's, which means the whole of your brain is likely to function better for longer, which is no small thing. There is compelling evidence that it will reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease in women as well as increased bone strength so there are fewer fractures as patients get older and these are the long-term benefits alongside some other interesting potential benefits around Alzheimer's although this is not yet proven but honestly what most of your patients will be most interested in is how will it help them today and this is where they will get the benefit most rapidly and it's in terms of making patients feel better because their brain is functioning better they'll have higher levels of energy better volition, able to take action on things that they want to do, clarity of thought if you can rid them of brain fog, and all of this can have the, an impact in the immediacy on how they can connect, build relationships and work, essentially thrive in today's society better because hormones are better optimized. Now this may have a long-term effect on how well they do after this that is hard to measure, but is all down to optimizing a human to help them function well. But more research will be needed to fully prove this. Within my membership, Profinity, we will be talking about protocols for starting HRT, but it's important to know that this is not a quick fix. All hormones need to be optimized according to the clinical response over time. So we need to understand, firstly, as a patient, that you will not immediately feel better, and that it will take a little bit of time to settle into the rhythm and to get doses exactly what you need to actually feel like yourself again. But I do think you should feel optimistic. I've seen many patients, including my own wife, experience huge transformations as they corrected their hormone levels. And this is something that we should be excited about as both clinicians and patients. If you're a clinician and you understand this and you look out for patients with these problems, you're going to help many, many women feel better 
much faster than your colleagues who have not yet realized how important the perimenopause is for human health, longevity, and the immediacy of how patients feel today. If you want to learn more about longevity and hormone replacement therapy, make sure you sign up to my waiting list. The link will be in the description down below. If you're a clinician who wants to reassure patients about the safety of HRT, make sure you download my summary document on the Women's Health Initiative, which covers the unnecessary cancer scare that occurred after that study was released. The link is in the description below.